Alright guys, today we're going to be learning about solubility, acids, and bases. This is Sonia Rodriguez. This is Emily Belanger. And Emily Hammonds. The first part we're learning about is solubility. The definition of solubility is the property of a solid, liquid, or gaseous chemical substance called solute to dissolve in a solid, liquid, or gaseous solvent to form a solution of the solute in the solvent. The three types of solutions are unsaturated solution, saturated solution, and supersaturated solution. Unsaturated solution, more solute dissolves. Saturated solution, no more solute dissolves. Supersaturated solution, more than the max amount has been dissolved with no precipitate. Solute substance being dissolved, example salt and sugar. Solvent substance in greater amount, universal solvent water. For example, an unsaturated solution would have more water than it would have of salt. A saturated solution would have just the right amount of salt or sugar needed in the water so that no more can dissolve. In a supersaturated solution, there would be an excess amount of the salt or sugar being used in the water. Therefore, if it was heated and cooled, there would be a precipitate or tiny little crystals that would form. Solubility Rules Rules or Guidelines for Chemical Compound Solubility The first rule is all compounds containing an alkali metal or are soluble. The second rule is all compounds with nitrates, acetates, and chlorates are soluble. The third rule, all chlorides, bromides, and iodides are soluble. Number four, compounds with sulfates in them are soluble except if they contain heavy metals, mercury, lead, barium, calcium, or strontium. <laughs> Number five, all hydroxides are insoluble unless they contain an alkaline metal, calcium, or barium. Number six, all carbonates, phosphates, sulfates, and sulfites are insoluble except when rule one is present. Some of the examples are below. For example, NaCl, which is the chemical formula for salt, is soluble because it is a chloride. The second one would be barium hydroxide, which is soluble. It would be insoluble if it were just hydroxide, but since it contains barium, it is soluble. Aluminum sulfate is insoluble because it is a sulfate, and sulfates are insoluble. Lead sulfate is soluble. It may contain sulfate, but it includes lead, so therefore it is soluble. Now we're going to move on to acids and bases. As you can see on the side, there's a scale. This is the pH scale. pH is potential hydrogen. The pH scale has a range from 1 to 14. pH is the measurement of positively charged hydrogen ions in a solution. Substances lower on the scale are more acidic, while substances higher on the scale are more basic. A few examples of the acidic substances would be gastric acid, lemon juice, orange juice, and even urine. An example of more basic substances would be bleach, soapy water, ammonia solution, even seawater. Acids. A solution that has a pH lower than 7 and has more H ions than OH ions. Strong acids will completely dissociate H ions to a solution in a, in a one-way chemical reaction. Weak acids will disso dissociate H ions both ways through a solution in a chemical reaction. Strong acids have a pH of 1 to 3. Weak acids have a pH of 4 to 6. Bases. A solution that has a pH higher than 7 and has more OH minus ions than H plus ions. Strong bases will completely dissociate OH negative ions to a solution in a one-way chemical reaction. Weak bases will dissociate OH negative ions both ways through a solution in a chemical reaction. This is basically the opposite of acids. Weak bases have a pH of 8 to 10, strong bases have a pH of 11 to 14. The neutral pH is 7. 
Pure water is an example of a pH of 7, and therefore is neutral. Acids and bases all have different definitions. There are three types of different definitions for acids and bases. The first one is Arrhenius definition. Acids increase H plus concentrate when you place it in water. Bases increase OH negative concentration when you place it in water. As you can see in the picture below, HCl is reacting with water, and then it becomes a hydrogen ion and then a chlorine ion. And then below that, NaOH reacts with water and it separates into Na ion or an OH ion. Bromstead definition. Acids are a proton donor, bases are a proton acceptor. In the picture below, you can see the generalized Bronsted acid base equilibrium. In the picture, the acids are giving away a proton and the bases are taking the proton in. The Lewis definition. Acid is an electron acceptor and bases are an electron donor. This definition is basically the exact opposite of the Bronsted definition. In this one, the acids are the acceptors, but they're not accepting protons. They're accepting electrons, as you can see in the picture below. The base is giving away an electron to the acids. This is the end of our video. Now it's time for the assessment. There are five questions we're going to give you. Please answer them on a sheet of paper. Number one, what are the three types of solutions? Number two, what is the difference between a solute and a solvent? Number three, what is the range of the pH scale? Number four, what is neutral on the pH scale? Number five, give one example of an acid and one example of a base. Thank you for watching our video.